Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see what is the impact testing and exemption of impact testing according to UG20F. Our flagship course is Master Static Equipment Design and PV Elite and Master Welded Storage Tank as per API 650. We have curated courses to suit your learning needs, so do visit our learning platform on scootoid.thinkific.com. If I have to do impact testing, then you know, the, we prepare the specimen, there is notch, and then we find how much energy it has absorbed before breaking. Okay, That will be given by, if it's a simple tool like this, the difference in height, I can convert into energy. So that will be the absorbed energy by that specimen, right? But now, whether I have to, if I want to avoid this, what are the clauses which can directly, you know, within few minutes, I can say that whether it is required or not, right? That will be very useful, right? Just by sitting on your chair, you can say it's not required. Okay. So the first clause, which talks about impact testing exemption is UG20F. Okay. So what it talks about that if my material is in P number one, group number one and one or two. So it is basically for P number one material. So there are multiple requirements. Like if I have a uh, thickness less than 13 mm, and if my material is falling into curve A, now what is curve A? What is curve B? I'll, you know, if somebody is not aware of that, we'll talk about that also a little bit. But you know, uh, just to remember, there are all the materials falls into different category, and then also based on whether it they are normalized, not normalized. Okay. So what twenty F talks about that if I have a P number one material, my thickness is less than thirteen mm, and the material is in curve A. In that case, I am exempted from impact testing remember there are additional requirements which need to be met okay so not only this is correct second if my thickness is less than 25 and my material in curve b c d so for b c and d your exemption is extended okay they are supposed to be better material right that what it seems like because for those material, code is allowing up to 25 mm. I don't have to do impact testing. Okay. But now, what are the conditions under which this, these exemptions are allowed? What are those conditions? Your vessel should be hydrostatically tested. So that is generally the case. We always do hydrostatic test. So that will be very easily met. Second, is very important. Your design temperature should be between 345 to minus 29 degrees Celsius. Then only I can apply this. If my, let us say MDMT is given as minus 32, that minimum design temperature from service for minus 29, I cannot take no, below minus 29, I cannot take that exemption. For minus 32, minus 35, it's not permitted. Okay, only this exemption is only allowed up to minus 29. Okay, for P number one material. Third, there should not be any thermal or shock load present as a design loading. Okay, then only this exemptions can be given to you. Okay, and please remember, all of these are to be met, not only one. All the conditions has to be met if I want to get this exemption. Okay. There should not be any cyclic loading present. Okay. So if cyclic loading, thermal or shock load are not defined as a design loading, they are not applicable. Your design temperature between minus 29 to 345 and there is hydrostatic test. In that case, for P number one material, I can take this 
exemption. Making sense? This is the first step to get the impact testing exemption. Okay. For in-depth training and to learn more about these courses, register with the link in the description.